Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Itu Meling Dube from um, South Africa. I am a lecturer in public administration and management um, at the University of South Africa. And today I'll be talking about um, the perceptions of learners on careers in the built environment. I'm just going to just share my presentation and then take it from there. All right, um, <clears throat> so the title of our paper is High School Learners Perception on Careers in the Build Environment Sector. And normally what this paper talks about is that um, co construction careers have yet to become a preferred choice among learners in South Africa, um, to an extent that the Engineering Council of South Africa in 2021 reported that in 2020, out of 15,501 learners that were eligible to study engineering, um, only 310 of them actually enrolled in um, institutions of higher learning. Uh, that's about 80% of the, the 15,000 that actually chose not to um, enroll in the qualification that is in the built industry, which you know um, heavily then looks at engineering or is included in, in engineering. And the reluctance for these learners to not actually take up careers in the built environment has caused a skill shortage in the industry in South Africa. And the built environment is actually quite a big contributor to South Africa's in economy. Um, in 2020, it contributed about 464 billion um, <clears throat> to the South African economy. But now if the, the, there's a skill shortage, it also then affects the ability of South Africa to actually then um, improve economically or um, develop as a country. Um, so careers in <clears throat> the built environment are not are also not um, attractive for black people and also for, for women in South Africa because <clears throat> most of the, the top managers in the built environment are mostly white men. And with the history that we've been through they usually sort of like see that as a as a deterrent to actually join um, the uh, the careers in the industry. Um, so now with that as well, on top of that, the education system in South Africa does not actually create or able is able to create um, the adequate candidates for, 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 for these careers. So what happens is that schools that were previously disadvantaged um, during apartheid and even now um, after democracy cannot actually um, give access to students with regards to career um, <clears throat> guidance or um, attending career, career talks. So therefore at the end of the day, these students will then select a career in the, in the build environment and then after a year or so in higher education or in universities, they will then um, drop out. So we then saw that it's important for us to actually then understand the perceptions of learners when it comes to um, careers in the built environment, because they are the future workforce of, of um, um, the built environment. So understanding this was actually the, the objective of the study. So it was actually to explore the perception of learners <coughs> on careers in the built environment. And then in that, we use the theory of planned uh, behavior, um, which is a theoretical framework in understanding the intentions of learners regarding careers in, in the built environment. So um, the theory then looks at um, the intent of a premeditated action or of a planned action at a specific time or specific place. Um, so that's the theory that we use in order to determine or maybe try to predict um, how, you know, um, students will then, you know, go about selecting careers in the built environment. So this theory then uses three assumptions, which one is attitude, the second one is subjective norm, and then also perceived behavioral control. With, with attitude, we look at um, what the, the attitude or the, the, yeah, the attitude towards a certain action is of a certain individual. So if let's say maybe 
um, the attitude toward a specific act or specific um, behavior is quite positive, then that behavior will, will then be, be done. And usually these attitudes are then gotten from set beliefs or maybe moral beliefs from, from the, the learner or the person. And also it is also a calculated um, effort in seeing whether things will work out or not, if there will be um, a positive um, outcome or a negative outcome. Obviously, if it's, there's a positive outcome, then the behavior will then be, be followed through. If there's a negative outcome, then you know uh, most people don't actually then carry on with the planned behavior. Um, the second um, uh, assumption is subjective norm. And then subjective norm looks at the, the, the significant other, the attitude towards the specific action um, by significant others. And when we talk about significant others, we talk about family, we talk about friends, and we also talk about the close community. So in this case, it would be um, the learner would then think, would a career in the you know, built environment satisfy my community or satisfy my, my family? Um, the theory also speaks about how in, in certain families, um, the children or the learners or family member will choose a certain career in order to sort of like um, satisfy the family members or close friends. So we also looked at this as well. And then the last um, assumption was pre, uh, perceived behavioral control. And perceived behavioral control looks at things like time, money, skill, um, and also maybe um, uh, the situation that the person is in. So if the person has time and they have the money and the skill to perform a certain behavior, they will normally then um, perform that behavior. Behavioral control, it's more about, are they able to then control the behavior after the intention that they've done? So after you've actually signed up for this career and you want to learn, or maybe after you've graduated from high school, I mean, from university, are you be able to, you know, be able to, um, um, work in the in the industry, you know, whether if it needs long hours, if it needs to for you to work with numbers, if it if it needs for you to work with other people, do you have the talent and the skill to do that? But then also from a high school perspective, do you have the funds in order to, um, you know, uh, take your studies further to to higher education institutions? So um, we use these then assumptions to sort of like test out um, the the learners that we, we, we then interviewed. Because now, as you see on the diagram, um, the three assumptions, attitude, subjective norm, and procedural uh, control, then um, sort of influence the intention. And then after that, the intention will then, whether it be the, that will then result in whether the, the behavior is then done or not. Obviously, you need a positive attitude you need um, a positive um, outlook from your perceived uh, norm or your um, close family and friends, and also uh, a positive behavioral control. It is also known that people might have a positive attitude and their family members might be, uh, have a positive attitude towards an intention or a behavior, but then sometimes if they don't have the time, the skill, or the money to pursue a certain um, career or a certain behavior, they won't, they won't do that. Um, so with the methodology of the study or the paper, we used a qualitative questionnaire, um, which we then gave out to 43 participants, which included grade 10 to grade 12 learners. And in South Africa, that would be the last three years of high school. Um, and in grade 10, you would then select the subjects that you would need for your said career. And in this instance, the participants had so um, chosen subjects that aligned them in a STEM um, um, sort of like a, a STEM line of like science, um, mathematics, um, um, yeah. So the the participants were also made up of twenty females and twenty males, and out of all these participants, these were high school learners from previously disadvantaged um, high schools in South Africa. Um, so all of them were, were black, um, coming in from disadvantaged backgrounds, and they were high performing students within their high school. 
And um, these were selected participants or selected learners um, who were then selected by a national department in South Africa called the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. The, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure is, um, is actually in charge of the infrastructure that um, is built in, in South Africa. So bridges, uh, roads, um, some of the houses, high rise buildings. Uh, so most of the uh, people who are working in that department are people who are in the built environment. So they are also actually have an initiative to actually introduce learners into the built environment. Um, and then what we then um, sort of did is that they were at a winter school where they spent a week there being introduced, um, I mean, having career guidance, having career talks and being introduced to the built environment, but then also being um, having lessons in, in maths and science um, since they're high performing students and also you know, these subjects are the ones that are needed for them to be able to pursue um, engineering or careers in the built environment at higher institution. And then the presenters, um, here there's a table of the presenters that actually presented um, career talks with regards to careers in the built environment. <clears throat> um, and these were mostly people who were in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure program that actually got them. So these were the alumni or the previous learners that went through the program and went to university and graduated and graduated in these um, professions like civil engineering, mechanical engineering, quantity surveying, architecture, construction, project management, landscape architecture, horticulture, town planning, property evaluation, and real estate. And most of them, like I said, were um, um, black, um, majority of them were male and with uh, a number of them being female. And we also then found out that in certain studies, um, people also then said that it's, it's important to have somebody who's delivering a career talk to be of the same ethnicity as the person that is receiving the, the, the career um, advice at, because then it makes them sort of like more confident in knowing that they can also, you know, get to um, such heights in their career, and they can also be able to um, participate in such, such a career. So the data collection and analysis, what we did is that we recruited um, the learners from, you know, the, the camp. Um, we had an information session and handed out printed questionnaires, and then the participants went and attended the built environment careers, um, career talks, and then after that, the participants participants filled out the questionnaire and then we collected them uh, the after from the participants and then we went and analyzed um, the, the data using um, um, a six-step analysis. And then what actually came out from the data itself is that we were, um, what came out from the data itself, we found three, th I mean, not three, five themes, which were careers as an act of service, better understanding of built environment careers, realizing personal traits for careers, um, built environment careers are jobs of the future and gaps in the, um, the career talks. With the careers uh, as an act of service, um, we found that a lot of the participants had a positive attitude towards careers in the built environment because they then also thought that they could use their skills after they'd have attained their careers to actually make um, a better world around them and their community since they're coming from um, um, an impoverished background. So they want to fix the roads or the houses around them or the bridges from where they are um, coming from. So also they would also benefit personally, but they will also then um, the careers around, I mean, not the careers, but the community around them and their significant others will also benefit from the skill that they would then get. So we saw that there was a, um, a positive attitude towards the careers in the built environment. And then um, another thing that came out is that better understanding of the built environment careers. Uh, most of the, the learners were not um, exposed to uh, careers in the built environment, especially the ones that we listed in the slide before. So they understood um, these careers much more better and they were able to sort of like make confident decision in whether they want to pursue these careers or not. And this also then came up where 
they also saw their perceived control on whether they have you know the traits to actually be in the better environment and that also created uh, um, a positive attitude and then also from the better understanding of built environment they realized their personal traits where some of them were like i like working with people or i can work under pressure or i like projects or i can work with numbers um they will then be able to then slot into the careers that they thought that they um fit into and then also that you know heightened their uh, behavioral control knowing that they'll be able to then you know be able to be successful in these careers um and then also uh, some of them gravitated towards um having built environment careers as jobs of the future as form of job security because they said that jobs like these will be needed in the future we will still need to build roads bridges and buildings and houses and have town planning and whatnot so that this is careers that will be needed in the future and won't be replaced by you know ai and um artificial intelligence and whatnot and then we also um found a theme that um, um highlighted gaps in the career talks where certain students did not like how the presenters actually presented their talks and they thought that the presenters were actually you know focusing on the money that you can make in this career um and they were only focusing on the positive things about certain careers instead of also giving you know the bad um side of these careers like maybe the long hours that you might work or being away from your family and things like that so they wanted a whole entire picture of the career so that they'd be able to choose the career confidently because um they saw the gaps and they thought the people that were presenting the the careers were trying more to sell the careers to them rather than you know relay their um um, normal experiences without actually, you know, hiding some of the bad stuff. Um, so with, with this study, we saw that career choices made by high school learners <clears throat> who are interested in the built environment are highly influenced by the attitudes towards, you know, the built environment. Um, and we saw that these attitudes can be influenced by the information or the access to information that they have. Um, it, it also is influenced by the people who are around them, the community around them, the family members who are around them as well. Um, if the family members think that this is a positive thing for them to do, they will definitely then go for it. Um, um, then we also saw that the perceived behavioral control is also important to them as well, because in some studies, people have found that if students are not um, confident in their skills, um, for instance, if they're not confident in their mathematics skills, they won't choose a career that has or needs um, mathematics. So these students were able to then see that the things that they've been doing or the things that they're talented in is actually quite needed in or is actually can be used in careers in the built environment. Um, so that, yeah, so that this is what we then came from this discussion that also the attitudes be um that were created um students wanted to sort of like help their community that they came from um so the 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 jobs and or the careers in the built environment will help them you know um satisfy that need and have a sense of belonging in their community because they can then go learn come back into the community and then use their skills um within that um with that being said we also then um said that it's important for the built environment or for the built environment industry to ensure that they disseminate information um, about careers that are available in the industry um, because there is a need to understand the future workforce and their perception of the built environment so that you know um, if we don't then understand their perceptions this will further then um, increase the the skill shortage that um, we have in South Africa with regards to, um, you know, um, skills within the, the built environment. So there is actually a quite a big need for the built environment sector to intensify the effort in dispersing information about the careers that are available in the industry. Um, I think, yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you very much.